Hey, what's up, everyone? Listeners of Adventures Through the Mind, watchers on YouTube. This is James Jesso here, your host of the podcast. So, this is not a video I had uh, any intention of making, but I got a message from a listener a couple days ago regarding my recent interview with Bernard Gunther. The email basically said, Hey, have you read the, like, said, hey, I really liked this episode. I followed up on it. So I went to, you know, Bernard's website and I found these essays that I see to be very problematic because they seem to be representing anti-Semitic views and what is often called Holocaust denial. Now, I hadn't read those essays, really. Uh, Bernard is an incredibly prolific writer. If you checked out his website, you'd see that. So I hadn't read those. Those articles are from several years ago. and uh, But I did read them as soon as I got that email because I was like, whoa, holy shit. What am I going to do about that? That's basically what this listener asked me is like, what are you going to do about it? And I'm like, well, I don't know. It's shit. Let me look into it. Ultimately, I needed to figure out how I'm going to address this, whether or not it's worthy of address because if it turns out that you know somewhere buried in Bernard's website is are these these essays that are propagating racist views well then you know I, I need to address that somehow however after reading them I really don't believe that Bernard is anti-semitic um, or I'm representing Holocaust denial or, or white supremacist views or or anything like that or neo-nazism as I, as I read it, I kind of got the sense that the whole concepts of the article were really focused around um, seeking truth. Now, it does, you know, despite not sounding or seeming to me to be anti-Semitic, it has, they have pretty anti-Zionist views, which I think is understandable to have some, you know, general strong issue with, you know, the, the political uh, actions of the Israeli government, as a lot of those political actions over the years have certainly have questionable ethics. The core of the articles, however, seem to have much more of an effort towards understanding how we basically inherit lies and the importance of learning to be able to discern truth from lies and doing your own investigation and working hard to essentially assess what the truth is by deconditioning the official stories of basically um, imperialist history and the social conditioning of the military industrial complex. And these are things that I actually, you know, I, I really support you know, very similar things, ultimately. Now, when it comes to the actual questioning of, uh, you know, World War II in these articles, because there's a lot of questioning around that official story, you know, I, I think it's, it is valuable to question the official story of history, especially when it comes to wars. I, I know for myself here in North America, I was brought up and educated to believe that World War II was won when the Americans entered the war and victory was had on behalf of you know, of the American effort, which, I mean, honestly, it, it just isn't true. If, if you look into the actual history of World War II, you'd see that the Nazis were already, you know, being pushed back on, on the Eastern Front on, by, on behalf of, of the Soviets. And, and, a, and a good portion of the war was actually won, you know, prior to the Americans entering in on the Western Front and, and, and D-Day and, and all those things. So that, you know, that small piece right there is is already a lie that I was told um, growing up around World War II, and so just suspect that there's more lies wrapped up in that, well, I mean, that's not an unreasonable suspicion. That said, I do find myself really suspect of some of the people that um, Bernard is referencing in uh, in these essays as, um, as the logic that they're using, the information that they're propagating, although some of it might be true or even all of it might be accurate to history, this is the kind of logic that currently in the in in the in the dissolution of objective reality due to you know the influx of of information and you know various angles of information especially on historical and and recent events plus the obvious influx of fake news and deep fakes and uh you know society generally waking up to the you know, to the fact that what we're taught is not necessarily what's real. And echo, internet echo chambers, I mean, all of that 
fused together, I think it would be very easy to go into the people that Bernard references here and get yourself mixed up in essentially the racist delusions held by anti-Semitics and neo-Nazis and, and white supremacists in general. Again, I'm honestly not convinced that Bernard holds any of these views. As I read the articles, there was a lot of really great information in there about truth-seeking and the lies that history tells us. So, I I mean, one thing I struggle with is, should I take this episode down? And ultimately, I'm not going to. It seems to me that his concern in these articles is truth and not being afraid to step outside of the official story to dismantle lies to find truth. But I could be wrong. And of course, my my concerns about the people he referenced, you know, being held, being held in consideration as I say that. Furthermore, even though I came to this this you know you know we'll say soft conclusion because I'm totally open to your thoughts on this in the comments um, and your thoughts on how I handled this because I decided to make this video because. This is a very real political issue in the world right now, and it was brought really into my house by by this email, by, of course, my actions, Bernard's actions, the action of, of the anonymous person who emailed me. It was brought into my house. I mean, literally, because that's where I am right now, but also, you know, figuratively insofar as the, the things that I've built here on the internet. And as you would know, listening, I'm a huge proponent of saying that psychedelic culture needs to know how to attend to political conflict as well as attend to, you know, like um, the personal challenges of defunct stories we've told ourselves uh, about ourselves due to our, you know, developmental conditioning inside of a dysfunctional society. I mean, serious political issues are a part, in my opinion, of uh, the value that psychedelic culture will offer to the world at large. And so I saw this making this video as an exercise in that. So ultimately, I'm going to leave it to you to determine exactly what you feel is going on here. If you follow the link, uh, if you're already on jameswgso.com, it's below. Um, but if you aren't and you're on YouTube, you can follow the link in the description. And in the description, I will have the articles in question, uh, the transcripts with the anonymous listener who submitted these concerns, as well as Bernard's response um, when I sent him the email asking him about this concern and telling him that I was going to basically make a public address on the issue. And again, regardless of what you determine out of all of this, I'm going to leave Bernard's episode up because his work around psychedelics and his ideas around psychedelics and, and around spiritual bypassing and false dawn syndrome and what it means to be a healthy spiritual person, I think all of those are actually quite valid areas of consideration. And I also see that people can have views that are really valuable and they can have views that, you know, don't work for other people or you like blatantly dislike. And it can be true at the same time. Like both of these things can be simultaneously true. And I mean, true in our experience, not necessarily true with a, you know, truth with a capital T. And I honestly just trust you to be able to discern truth from bullshit and to make your own decisions. And I am not really a proponent of censorship. Well, I mean, except for maybe censoring some curse words to help with my YouTube brandings and keep things mostly safe for work. But I'm not really a proponent of censorship. So taking down this episode based on one person's totally understandable offense seems a little unreasonable. And furthermore, when I do something like that and I do practice censorship, what I what I do is I make the assumption that you're too ignorant to assess what's truth from what's bullshit. That you're too ignorant and incapable to make up your own mind, which I don't believe. I trust you to make your own decisions and to adult and I trust you to figure out what the truth is and to do your due diligence in not getting swept up in internet bullshit and the type of bullshit that is contained in the logic of racists, anti-Semitics, and neo-Nazis and white supremacists in general. I trust you not to get wrapped up in that bullshit. Just to be clear, although I do not support censorship, I do curate my content so as to not give a public platform, my hard-earned public platform, to people who represent hateful views, be it racism, sexism, or whatever. This is not what I consider um, censorship so much as I consider it um, my selective and creative curation of content.
although I am not particularly opposed to doing so with the intention of debating and dismantling those hateful or, you know, those hateful views in a public domain. Again, I'm going to leave it to you to decide. You can comment on YouTube or on jameswjesso.com and let your thoughts be heard. Again, all the transcripts of my communication with the anonymous listener, as well as the article, or the essays in question, and my uh, dialogue with Bernard on this issue are available at jameswjesso.com for you to assess things. Uh, and that's it. So good luck. <laughs> good luck on navigating this chaotic and calamitous world of, of political conflict, um, especially here on the loud internet.